Well, it's back to the grind. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm back, and I'm just a little bit annoyed by the fact that I got duped with the marketing of a kid's toy that I bought for my son for Christmas yesterday. But I'll get to that here in just a second. As the audience builds, let me go through the show dates real quick for everybody watching the replay and for you just joining in. It is... Tuesday, December 26, 2017, 420 p.m. Central Time. This is the 420 Report with your good pal, Jared Dog. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Let me know you're here with a question or a comment or anything you want to throw at me. Heckle me a little bit. I don't give a shit. But in any case, the most important thing is hit that share button, hit that follow button, and let's get some engagement going because that's what this is all about. I'm not just here to listen to my own voice. I'm not here just to for my own health. There we go. Love it. Love all the shout outs and love going across the screen or whatever that is. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm probably here just to listen to myself talk because that's what comedians do. We're narcissists that way. Uh, upcoming shows. I will be in Altura, Minnesota this Friday night, December 29th with world famous Uncle Lair. That's right. I'll be opening up for world famous Uncle Lair at Pooter's. Pooter, I love the name of that bar. Pooter's, which is actually ran by a guy named Pooter, Pooter himself, and uh, <laughs> Teresa Pooter. Pooter, Pooter, and Teresa Pooter, I think is what, anyway, I'll tag all the information below. It's at Pooter Sports Bar and Grill, Artura, Minnesota, just north of Winona, just north of La Crosse a little bit in that general area. So if you were in the Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota area, anywhere up in that little quadrant, Head on up to Altura to Pooter's Sports Bar and Grill and check out a show with myself and world-famous Uncle Lair, Larry Reeve. This dude, I remember watching him back in the day on a Rodney Dangerfield HBO special, and I'm so excited to work with him this Friday, and you know it's going to be a fucking great show. If you got me opening up that thing and then him getting up there and closing it out, you know it's going to be worth the ticket money. So Altura, Minnesota, this Friday, December 29th, Pooters Sports Bar and Grill. And then I go to all the way from there, all the way down through Iowa, into the middle of Nebraska, Palmyra, Nebraska, for a show at the Palmyra Pub. It's just a small little club there. I think they sold out like 70 tickets already. From what I understand, it's already sold out. But if not, get there quick if you're in the area, if you're in Palmyra. And get yourself some tickets. Make sure to see Sue and Jerry. They'll treat you right. New Year's Eve, this Sunday, December 31st, I'll be in Balaton, Minnesota, with Nathan Tricky Allen at the community center there for an event hosted by Kirkpatrick's Bar and Grill. So the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show, big New Year's Eve event, three hours, three-hour night of stand-up comedy, crazy-ass magic tricks, so I'll see you guys there for that one. If you're in the area, it's going to be a great time. We're bringing in like 200, 250 people for that show, which normally we would do at the bar, but it's not big enough to hold this event. So they moved it across the street to the community center and sponsoring it. And then afterwards, there's going to be the after party at the bar. So I'm really looking forward to that. And thank you guys, everybody, for joining in. Missy Carson, hey, look, I'm back on the grid. Cool. Hey, congratulations, Missy Carson. Must have got a new smartphone for Christmas there, girl. Derek swearing in. Happy holidays to you too, brother. Got to get down to Centerville again sometime, man. You know, we had a small crowd there the first time I performed. I think if we bump up the promotion just a little bit, I'll bring some new material. We'll make sure to bring, uh, who was that cat that sat right up front? Anyway, I've got some hilarious videos I want to share on YouTube coming up soon. That's another thing. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, head on over there. It just type in Jaredog on YouTube and a bunch of shit should come up under the bar comic. Um, but what I do is on there is I show you the stuff that I can't show you on here, which is uh, footage that I take with my video camera traveling around the country doing shows for taverns, nightclubs, neighborhood bars, and clubs 
all across the country and give you an insider's look at what it's really like to be a stand-up comedian doing this shit day in and day out on the road. It's not all glamour and glitz. In fact, it's very little glamour and glitz. A lot of it is hardcore, bitter fucking reality when your car breaks down in the middle of the side of the road and it's cold out and you don't know anybody to come help you out. You're afraid that the goddamn thing's going to overheat on your way home. And thank Thank the Lord that you got friends on the way back that you can stop and it'll help you out. Like Bob LaFada, who helped me keep my minivan from blowing up just a couple of weeks ago. Thank God for that, dude. Or I might be stuck in Michigan City, Indiana right now. You know, I can think of worse things, but not very many. Uh, This week, I've got my kids some... Nope, UPS consumed my life and most of my... Oh, I see. You finally got some time off from not having to work so hard over the holidays, making special cookies. Nathan Dwayne Vincent making special cookies. Want some? Yeah, you know it, dude. I'll be back up in Kennewick this May, May 19th. I'll be bringing my co-star Katrina Brown for the comedy Battle of the Sexes. It's the He Said, She Said comedy show. You get two points of view, pretty much talking all about relationships, life, love, um, sex, drugs, rock and roll, anything you can think of. We And then we do the Q&A with the crowd afterwards where you throw up whatever, t- you write down whatever you throw up, <laughs> where you throw up, what it, you write down whatever topics you want, throw them our way, give us some questions or some comments, and then we just make up material on the fly. So that's going to be at the Eagles Club, Kennewick, Washington, May 19th. Vince, uh, Nathan, write it down, tell people, let the folks know. Hell yeah, man. But don't make them yet. Make them, make them, make, you know, later on towards May when I'll be up there. You make them today, then I don't know, you know, throw them in the freezer or something. Save them for me. I'll see you then, though, brother. I got a toy for my kid over Christmas. Holy shit. Holy shit. I got him what I thought would be a fun gift for us to play with together, an indoor hockey set. He's expressed a lot of interest in playing hockey, and I wanted to get him, like, some kids' workout gear or something like that because he likes to come down to my little personal gym I have here over in the corner, and when I'm lifting weights, he grabs the little the orange ones, you know, the little two-pounders, and he does, like, some bench presses on the floor and does some other stuff, you know, just dumb little kid fucking around weightlifting. But I can tell that he's got an interest for it, so I wanted to get him, like, maybe a kid-sized kettlebell or, you know, my wife suggested one of those little tiny trampoline things that he can jump up and down on. You know, anything that he can get involved with that's at his level where he can join me when I'm working out down here. And that shit is hard as fuck to find, man. We went to the Dick Sporting Goods. We went to a couple other sporting sections and different department stores and a couple other sporting goods stores. And nobody has shit. Nobody has workout. Nobody has anything. Nobody has, like, workout shit for kids. You can get, like, smaller weights. That's about it, which he already has. Or you can get, like, baby stuff, where it's like the baby's not working out. You just got, like, a play baby. T- it says it says little tykes on the fucking thing. You know, it was a, it was like, we felt, oh, it was like a little kid's kettlebell. It was actually listed and promoted and advertised as a kid's kettle, kettlebell, a children's kettlebell. And it was, it was made out of plastic. It was made out of plastic. It just had like a plastic handle on it so the kid could just pretend that he's lifting kettlebells. Give him a real fucking kettlebell, like something with some real weight behind it. It doesn't have to be super heavy. It doesn't be like, you know, a grown man-sized fucking weight, but it could be like it could actually be have some weight to it so he could lift it up and maybe do like a children's workout. Not this fact fucking fake ass plastic toy shit workout equipment where they're not actually going to get a workout routine oh they can just pretend like they're working out what's the fucking point of that i don't want to i don't want to waste my time pretending like i'm fucking working out man you know like if i'm not actually getting to get the benefits of the workout i don't want to spend minute number one doing that shit why are we teaching our kids oh hey here's fake workout equipment you can just pretend like you're working out you don't really need to exercise you got video games for that shit. You got Wii for that shit, you know? You can just pretend later on in life that you're actually bowling or that you're actually doing whatever, playing tennis or whatever the fucking sport is on Wii. People just pretend like they're doing Oh, you can do the Wii workout, the Wii workout. You're playing a fucking video game. 
You know what I mean? I think that's it's like, why are we marketing to our kids now? Why don't we have actual workout gear for kids? I could have bought my son a child size kettlebell that he actually could have, you know, maybe like a little instruction booklet with like six exercises that are appropriate for a six year old, something like that. That's a great marketing gimmick right there. Six kettlebell workouts that are appropriate for your six year old. Boom, problem fucking solved. I'd buy that shit in a heartbeat. But instead I go around to actual sporting goods centers and the best I could come up with was a tr little tiny trampoline that has the word little tykes written on it. And you know that motherfucker would probably fall apart the second he stepped up on the goddamn thing. Anyway, rant over as far as that goes. What I wound up settling with was, like I said earlier, thought it might be fun to play some indoor hockey with him. He's expressed interest in playing hockey. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we find this kid's indoor hockey set. And the graphics on the cover were completely they're completely uh, out of uh, um, shit, what a, out of scale. What do I call it? They're completely out of proportion completely out of proportion the the net on the thing first of all it looked like a real net it looked like a real net turns out just a play fake plastic cartoon net just a cartoon net that you you stick up on the door now i do like that it comes with a sound effects machine so every time you do score in the place plastic fake cartoon net every time you actually do get a point it sends off sounds and that's so that's kind of cool but I think they could have invested a little bit less in the bells and whistles and the brick in a bracket and invest a little bit more in the production of a real fucking hockey net. Just a thought. Uh, but And then the sticks that came with it on the package, they were put up next to the net. They looked like they were going to be fairly good, decent-sized sticks, you know. They would look like they would take up about the size of the box. And... They're like eight inch sticks, nine inch sticks. So I gotta bend way the fuck over when I'm playing hockey with the we just played a few a few hours ago. And then I realized actually that kind of is fair in a way. And it was annoying at first because I can only fit like I can't you know, my hand around the top of one of them. But that actually is fair because that creates a handicap. You know, now I gotta play the entire game just completely bent over like this, where he's running around like a madman. If I had a full size hockey stick and could play it for real, I'd whoop his ass. <laughs> I'm not one of those parents that believes in letting the kid win. It's like if you can whip his ass, whip his fucking ass in the game. You know what I mean? Teach him to get better. Unless it's a coaching session, you know, and you're just trying to teach him some skills and some fundamentals so that way he can level up his game a little bit. But if you're actually going full on with the competition, I say destroy that little fucker, especially if it's a game of chess. <laughs> when I play chess against my kids, I do not hold back, and I can't, because if I held back, they would destroy me. If I was like, oh, is that the best move you want to make? Is that the best move you want to make? And kept giving them chances, they ain't going to do that shit back to me, and I suck at chess. I just like to play because I think it's fun. You know, I like the, the mental challenge, but I'm horrible at it. I lose probably nine out of ten games. So if you ever want to play chess with me, if you want to feel good about yourself, just come play chess with Jared Dog. You'll walk away a winner. You'll walk away a winner. Coming up this week, uh, let me do some show notes. Hey, John Donovan joining in. Good to see you, brother. Uh, I'll be in Altura, Minnesota. I, oh, I'm so excited working with the world famous Uncle Lair this Friday night at Pooter's Sports Bar and Grill, Altura, Minnesota. The world famous Uncle Lair. I saw this dude back on Rodney Dangerfield, young comedian special in late 80s, mid 80s. I saw him on A&E's Evening at the Improv when I used to sneak out of my bedroom at night to watch cable TV. I loved watching Evening at the Improv. They would run just comedian after comedian after comedian after comedian. None of them were really that famous. A lot of them got to be famous later on, but at the time, they were just the up and coming, up and coming, you know, fucking comedy workhorses. Back when stand-up comedy was when boon times in the 80s and early 90s. And then, of course, when I got involved, fucking bottom fell out of the entire industry. But that's another story for another 420 report, another time, which I always come to you live 
Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays at 4.20 p.m. I missed yesterday because it was Christmas, but I'm back, back to the grind, and I'll be back tomorrow with another 4.20 report at 4.20 p.m. or as close as possible, Wednesday, hump day, happy hour. And, uh, oh, rest of my show date, Saturday, I will be in Palmyra, Nebraska. That show's pretty much sold out from what I understand. And But if not, there might be a few tickets left. So if you're getting this and you're in Nebraska, if you're in the central Nebraska area, it's just outside of Lincoln, head on out there to Palmyra, the Palmyra Pub, grab yourself some tickets, get a hold of Sue Biltoff, get a hold of Jerry, whoever it is that's out there, they'll treat you right. Get yourself some tickets and come see me this Saturday at the Palmyra Pub. And then New Year's Eve. Eve, Balaton, Minnesota. I'll be doing the Dirty Jokes and Magic Tricks show with Nathan Tricky Allen, sponsored by Kirkpatrick's Bar and Grill, held at the community center right there across the street from the bar. And we'll be doing the after party uh, at the bar of after the show. So, <laughs> counting down to New Year's. Do you guys have New Year's resolutions? What do you have planned for 2018? That's the stuff that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow over a couple of cocktails. Um, my wife hooked me up with some a uh, couple tastes of her cran- cranberry vodka with this new passion fruit type cranberry mix that she got from Trader Joe's. So that's what I'm going to be drinking tomorrow for a hump day happy hour. You know, get a little 100% fruit juice in my cocktail. Make those make those alcoholic beverages healthy. What else you got? Any more comments in here? I saw a bunch coming up right off the bat when I first start, started and ranting and raving about the holidays and Christmas gifts, and I've got 16 comments listed here, so I'm going to try to scroll up just a little bit, and here we go. I'm making it happen. A lot of people joining in. Thank you guys so much. Hit the share button and the like button and show me some love and let people know what, you know, what Jared Dog's all about. Let people know where you're going this weekend. Come see the Jared Dog Show, either in Palmyra, Nebraska, or at Balaton, Minnesota, or in Altura, Minnesota, where I'll be working with Uncle Lair, Larry Reeb. Um, shit, now I can't get to him. I had a bunch of them. Can't get engaged, brother. I'm already married, unless you're up for moving to Utah. <laughs> Thank you, Gary Langley, all the way from Traverse City. Appreciate that one. Um, you know, I'm actually, I would actually be up for a triangulation marriage. You know, not only do I believe in gay marriage, but I think a straight couple should be able to marry a third person if for no other reason than extra health care benefits and child care. You know, it'd be really nice if I just had somebody I trusted to be able to watch my kid consistently while I took my wife out on a date night for free. If they could just come in, they had to do it because they're married into it. You know, you got to watch the kid or I take the wife out for a date night. You got to do it for free because he's your kid now. You know, he's your stepson. <laughs> I think you should be able to have a gay marriage, but then a, mar- a straight couple should be able to marry a third person as well. But hey, I'll, maybe I'll write up some more detailed thoughts on that for a future video blog, which I'll be coming back to you again tomorrow. I can't get into the rest of these comments. It's getting too complicated and I'm saying stupid shit now. So thank you guys for tuning in today, tuning in, clicking on hitting the fucking button, whatever whatever you did to watch and check out the 420 Report, my live video blog, which I do every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursdays, 420 p.m. Central Time, back tomorrow, Wednesday, hump day, happy hour. And again, show dates this Friday, December 29th, Altura, Minnesota, a Pooter Sports Bar and Grill with Uncle Lair, Larry Reeb. I'll be in, and I can't go back down. Anyway, hit the like button, hit the share button, come see me this Saturday in Palmyra, Nebraska at the Palmyra Pub, and come see me and hang out with me. If you're in the southern, southwestern Minnesota area, Balaton, Minnesota, Kirkpatrick's Bar and Grill, where I'll be doing the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show with Nathan Tricky Allen. Back tomorrow for another edition of the 420 Report, 420 p.m. Central Time. It's hump day, happy hour. I'll be drinking a vodka cranberry, telling you like it is, getting drunk, talking shit. You know how I do. And I'll be back on Thursday. I don't know what I got planned for Thursday. Probably some news resolutions, some year in review kind of thing. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up right here, right now. Thank you guys for joining. I'll see you back here tomorrow, 420 p.m., as close as possible. In the meantime... Dog bless America!